Hey, what's up? So I worked my first corporate job last year for eight months in the technology sector as a junior software developer. It went uh, pretty well. I learned a lot and there were a lot of pros, a lot of cons. And this is my top five lessons from that first job, if you're interested. Let's get into it. So number one uh, lesson for me after my first corporate job would basically be that clear communication is the most important thing. I worked a remote job, which admittedly makes things difficult, but um, the importance of just letting your teammates know what you're working on, what the uh, kind of like goal for the week is, when the deadlines are, when clients are expecting things, when you're expected to be uh, done with certain projects and what everyone is working on, super important. And uh, it's very easy to fall into the trap of like, oh, we've got a Jira board, cool. You know, that's our communication for the day. Everyone knows what everyone else is working on. But um, after a couple of weeks on projects and that, just learning that it's important for me to tell you what I'm working on and what is expected of you and how we're going to approach this whole project, super important. And I know it just sounds so ridiculous and so cliche, but even in a large organization, especially in a large organization, it's much harder to tell what everyone's working on and how things are going as opposed to when you've got four people on a team and you're all sitting next to each other in the office. And so in particular, uh, in my team, it was uh, frustrating when people were um, expecting things from other people or expecting messages from other people. And those people were working on other important things that they had to get done, but then there was just like uh, lackluster communication. Um, and that'll lead into my fifth point later about remote work. But um, yeah, clear communication, number one thing, hard to get right and uh, uh, disastrous when you don't get it right. <laughs> my number two uh, most important lesson from my job was that documentation is super important. So we worked in a software engineering team, right? Um, commenting and leaving instructions on how things are built and um, providing instructions for how to replicate certain things is super important. There's a whole um, field of study that goes into how software documentation should be written out and our team didn't have much documentation. Um, and that as a new hire was very frustrating and very difficult to get into things. Um, and basically just to come up to speed with stuff. Because software is not rocket science, right? Um, okay, well some software is rocket science, but not all, <laughs> not all rocket science is software. Ugh. Anyway, um, it shouldn't be super complicated after a couple of weeks to be contributing to a team's project, to be contributing to a large system that you're a, a small part of. Um, but it was very difficult at the, my job uh, to do that because um, there was a lot of custom code and a lot of custom um, solutions that had been built, but it was very difficult to actually contribute to that because there was no documentation. The code wasn't commented, it wasn't um, like a big outline doc showing you how the, these four important parts of the system, the mobile app, the, the web app, the, the database, whatever, connected to each other. Um, I had a lot of uh, Teams calls with team members. And my team members, by the way, were awesome. They were super helpful on that. But there's only so much um, a team member can do in terms of time and effort and that um, in instructing someone on how a system works versus you actually playing with it yourself and um, uh, learning to use it and that. And it's uh, kind of difficult for senior team members to take time out of their busy day, time away from the project to teach new hires. You know, it's like a catch-22. You don't add people to a project and suddenly the productivity goes up. Productivity actually goes down because now you have to bring up those new hires to speed. And uh, documentation is a way of um, you know, front-loading that effort and that of um, helping future people on the project uh, when you're currently doing the work. So when you write a function or when you do um, and you implement a feature, you can document it, write some comments, um, uh, have an overall uh, structure and guideline for how the project's components fit together. And then when a new person comes onto the team, they can read the documentation that can be a part of that. And it obviates the need for a whole lot of uh, online learning sessions uh, in a Teams call on that. Uh, we have senior developers have to walk through baby steps of how the project is, is set up. And so I found that very frustrating. Um, in particular, I found that after several weeks, I still wasn't contributing to the team. And I know it takes a while, um, sometimes many years actually, to contribute properly to a business. But in particular, in software development, where I'm used to working on my own projects and that, and after a couple of hours, you know, shipping features, actually making some progress in that, it felt quite galling to, after several weeks, still not be contributing that much because of the lack of documentation. And so, yeah. Uh, um, now, lesson number two for me, especially, is like write good documentation. It doesn't have to be um, completely over the top and not every function has to be documented, but um, any person external from the project should be able to come on and after a couple of hours of reading documentation, start to get a sense of the system and how it works and then actually like start contributing meaningfully to it soon thereafter. Um, that's my opinion. A third lesson, um, and this particularly applies to software development and to software engineering companies, is to make good technical decisions. Now, I'm still a junior, um, and this is a junior's opinion, so uh, you as a senior developer watching this may have a different opinion to me, but um, choosing your, the right technology stack and choosing architectural decisions that make sense, not just for an enterprise environment and for like a big project, um, not just considering the one dimension of it, but also the dimension of how easy it is to code in and how easy it is to make progress in, 
um, is super important for actually delivering a project on time and effectively. I understand for a big enterprise project, you need security, you need scalability, it's got to weather storms, it's got to be reliable, um, you know, it's going into production, it's going to be used by big corporates and that it's important um, for it to be reliable and so your architectural decisions behind that splitting of components, of user interfaces, of classes, reusability, um, security, scale, all of that is super important. But at the same time, if your project is extremely difficult to work with, and is extremely difficult to, uh, to push to production and extremely difficult to debug and work with and get to grasps with as a new hire, um, you know, that, that's a questionable technical decision in my opinion. Um, the system that I, I worked on was very impressive and super cool to work with um, once I finally grasped my head around it several weeks later. Um, and in those several weeks, you know, I was once again taking away time from senior developers because I needed help, I needed things explained to me, I needed um, assistance because of the, the lack of documentation and that. And so, very interesting in my opinion because um, the most important, sorry, the most expensive part of a software project is often your staff, it's your technical staff salaries. And um, you can shave off a lot of uh, milliseconds off a database query. Uh, by building a whole scalable system that scales across several different architectures and that and we didn't have something like that i think we just had one uh, one big database um but you see the kind of thing i'm building to you can make all these important technical decisions to have a big uh, complicated technical stack that's reusable and flexible and um amazing but if it's difficult to work with and it takes your developers uh even senior developers who joined the project after me um several weeks to to grasp it and actually start working on it I'm not sure that's actually such a great technical decision in my opinion because computing is cheap these days I'm um, running CPUs and then in the clouds and that is pennies on the dollar um, as opposed to um, I mean I know what my own salary was and I can only imagine what the senior developers salaries are these days um, <laughs> that's what the expensive part of your project is and um, me as a like a personal developer I am all about speed you know I want to go from idea to prototype in an hour and in a day uh, you the client must have a usable project that they can um, either like or dislike and then you know, inform future de developing decisions but if your technical architecture is so um, big and complex and interdependent and um, convoluted that it takes um, senior developers um, several days to just onboard onto it and then start working with it and making making progress on it and then um, even existing people on the project, uh, you know, it, it being a slow development and iteration cycle, I don't know if that's the best technical decision for developing software, uh, in my opinion. Uh, once again, you know, I am a, a genius. I do not actually have that much experience in the world and experience with running big hyperscale systems. Um, but as an outsider and from an outsider perspective, I do not think uh, that, that complicated, super uh, ridiculous architecture is always the best way to go, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, that was an interesting lesson and something that I'm keen to learn more about as I work on future projects um, in upcoming jobs and on upcoming projects. My fourth lesson from my first job, uh, and this is particular because it was a remote job, is that remote work is very difficult and is uh, actually incredibly difficult to get right, particularly in the software engineering space. Uh, this ties back to my first point about clear communication and documentation. When you're not sitting next to people all day, um, it, it's difficult to get uh, stuff done, especially as a junior, because you are um, kind of uh, rate limited by the amount of interaction you can have with your seniors and with the project. And uh, that communication problem uh, as well is my experience with a remote communication platform. We had Teams and we had Jira and there was a lot of um, words going about. But still, despite um, those hours of communication spent online, there were often times in my team where um, people were working on different things than they should have been, or they were working on important things, but there were other important things that were stopping other people from working on uh, other important things. And just that small mismatch of communication led to a lot of wasted hours. And um, I've got other friends that work re remote, um, remote uh, software engineering jobs, and, and their company seemed to get it right there. Um, their processes and that are slightly better than my previous company. But in the same vein, I've heard horror stories from people uh, working at companies, um, friends of mine, uh, where things just don't get done and uh, you're, you're waiting for hours on end for other people to finish things. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not completely sold on a remote work, eh, if you ask me. If you'd asked me at the start of last year, I would have said, awesome, cool thing in the world, you work from home, it's very flexible, all these super things. But now looking at it from a more business perspective, I think there's some challenges and problems to it being addressed. Um, and actually working um, correctly and I think working in an office just it lubricates so many more of those social interactions that hey let me oh that bug you need to do that you need to open that file as opposed to waiting hours for that team's message to come through just to get that same little bit of information um, 
But in the same vein, it, it really just comes down to, uh, it requires more effort to make remote work work. You have to over communicate and you have to over document as opposed to in a physical environment where those things can kind of be lacking, but because you're next to each other, you can be going off much faster and things can get done a lot quicker. Um, and so it definitely can be done. I think it's just a lot harder. And so, um, I mean, if you're starting a business or if you're running a company and that, you have to budget extra time, extra um, resource allocations, extra um, communication, extra processes, extra documentation to make up for that lack of in-person communication. Um, yeah, my next job, uh, if I go and get one, will definitely be in person. And my final lesson from my first job is <laughs> perhaps an obvious one, but it's that um, working is, is hard. Um, not, not in terms of like a cerebral difficulty. I, don't, uh, I think my varsity courses were much more cerebrally difficult, but uh, the eight hour workday and that's, and getting stuff done consistently on a day to day basis and communicating and dealing with both the interpersonal and intertechnical um, relationships of a large project and a large team is difficult and it requires its own skill set as opposed to just sitting down and working on your own code. Uh, that's what I'm doing now, you know, working on my own projects and my own kind of startup ideas for the next several months. And um, a lot of that friction and a lot of the, those difficult um, interpersonal um, communications and um, not, not conflicts, but rather, shall I say, like, you know, managing your relationships and managing your um, ability to work together and uh, do your work whilst enabling other people to do their work. Um, it's an interesting um, problem and work is, is hard and I'm obviously in a very privileged position to have had just a software engineering position online much easier than um, like a physical uh, labor in-person kind of job but it's interesting to see the kind of things that go into making a business work and uh, I, I learned a lot from my job and I, I'm really grateful for the things that I learned of how to run a company properly all the things that I never really considered before like our oh, scheduling interfacing with clients, making sure everyone's up to date and that. I think those are like the soft skills that actually do make or break a business. Technical decisions are technical decisions. Um, you know, whether we build the, the app in Python or in JavaScript and that, but at the end of the day, if the website runs, the website runs. Most uh, non-technical clients, um, unless you, you build a really shit project, are not gonna notice the difference in your technology stack, but they will notice the difference in um, how fast you communicate, how organized your team is, how long it takes you to ship things, um, and I, I'm very grateful for my previous job and uh, the things that I learned there. And I think that I'm, I'm, I'm really much better off for the time that I did there. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to using that knowledge in my future career and that, and uh, just using it to do cool shit. Um, so yeah, if anyone from my previous job is working, uh, is watching this, um, I hope you're doing great. Um, I hope the project is going sick. And uh, anyone, everyone else, thank you for watching. Good luck with your own career and your own software engineering. Um, if you're working in software engineering, you're in software engineering uh, goals and pursuits. And if you're not working in software engineering, uh, I hope that things are going well for you as well. All right, now I'm just rambling. I'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.